Hi, Rupa. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. How about you, sir? I'm, I'm good too. Thank you. So can you tell me something about yourself? So my name is Rupa. I did my uh, Bachelor of Engineering in Computer and uh, Information Science. Then I did my software testing course in both manual and automation. Then I joined the Reliance Smart Company. There uh, I worked as a QA in there. I did both manual and automation testing. Uh, and I, uh, I am the part of Agile uh, ceremony also. Mm -hmm. I attended uh, daily stand-up meetings and uh, I prepare, I, uh, I analyze the requ requirements. Then after that, I clearly understood the requirements. Then I written the I have written the test scenarios, test cases. Then I did manual t functional testing. Uh, in that, uh, uh, if the bug is uh, re bug is present, then I will as assign it to the developer and collaborate with the developer. Uh, then, if any clearance is not there between me and developer, then we have. Uh, we go to the product owner, then we clear the uh, features of that uh, product. And mm -hmm. then uh, I did automation using Selenium with Java and using uh, BDD framework. Uh, that's, that's all. Okay, okay, great. So you were telling about the situation when you're finding the defects. You're having word with the developer. So don't you log the defects in the defect management tool? Yes, sir. I have logged. Uh, we use the Jira tool for defect tracking. Okay. So can you tell me the steps? How will you log the defect in Jira? What are the different things that you will select in Jira? What are the different options for which you will put some values? So what is the process of entering the bug in Jira? First, uh, we have go to the project, respected project, then uh, uh, by clicking new, then uh, issue the uh, bug by giving the descriptions and the environment to use, then uh, uh, to which uh, developer we have to assign and what type of bug it is. And uh, yeah. uh, the, the severity and priority of the bug, mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Okay, and what about the sprint? So in which sprint that bug would be taken? Would it be taken in the current sprint or do you log it in the backlog? How, how do you define that? Uh, according to the models uh, build prepared in that model, then uh, if the model is backlog, then we, uh, when we uh, backlog the defect, whenever it arrives, we'll uh, assign that one. Mm -hmm. So you mean, so you can answer in this manner that uh, uh, you have a defect which is coming in the current story, which you are testing in the current sprint, then you will mark it to be fixed in the same sprint itself. If it's a, if it's a critical bug, if it's a major defect, you'll ask them to fix it ASAP. But if it is something that is related to some other functionality, which is not being taken care of in this print, and the customer is also not going to use that particular functionality very early, you can keep it for the backlog. And then it will be taken care of in the defect rising. The sprint would be assigned to that particular defect. Okay. Can you tell me something about the number of test cases or the test scenarios that you were you are documenting in your every day? So every day, let's say you start your work. So how many test cases do you design? How many test cases do you develop? Sir, so it's uh, total depending on the, the module, the uh, complexity. How mm. first uh, we have to understand clearly what is the feature, what to be uh, uh, target to achieve that functionality. Then mm. according to that, uh, we... Uh, write the test scenarios and according to the say, test scenario we had the test cases if the complexity is high then mm -hmm. three to four scenarios mm -hmm. we write okay great great and how about if the complexity is medium medium then seven to eight scenarios will cover 
Great. So, what is the difference between test scenario and a test case? Test scenario is the uh, description of the major functionality, whereas the test cases is the in-depth functionality. What are the uh, test data we are putting in that that will cover in the test cases? Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, uh, login is the test scenario. And uh, the test cases are uh, using lo uh, login in the in the login we use uh, username and password by mm. putting positive uh, test positive data negative data. Likewise, we write the test cases according to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the things that you will take care during the time of uh, sprint planning? Sprint planning. Mm. So what is sprint planning? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, functionality, we have to uh, do one functionality. Then what, what are the, uh, what are the resources we require? What, what the, um, so that steps is test to plan. follow? Yeah, that is test plan. Right, in test plan, you have the resources or you will define what are the different types of testing, what are the tools that you will be using, whether it would be manual testing or automation. But I'm asking about sprint planning. Let's say you are sitting, you are having a meeting with the development team, scrum master, project manager. Everyone is there in the conference room and you are doing a planning of user stories that you are going to take care in the sprint. Yes. So what are the things that you will take care at that time? From the QA perspective. At that time. Mm -hmm. Yes. First, uh, we have to cover the uh, major functionality, like, mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, bank account. Uh, in that bank account, uh, we have uh, models like uh, deposit, withdraw. Mm -hmm. Plus, so. Uh, in two to three weeks, we have to cover the deposit part. Mm. Like that, uh, we plan for that. Okay. See, when, when you get this kind of a question, then what you need to answer is, whenever you have some user story and you are connecting with the team in a sprint planning meeting, so you'll go through that user story. You'll go through that user story. You'll understand that user story first before coming to the planning meeting, right? You'll go through from your side. Let's say there are, uh, let me give you an example in that case. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, let me know once it is visible. Yeah, is the screen visible? Yes. So basically, you are doing a sprint planning meeting. So you will be having several user stories in that sprint, which you have to plan. So before coming to the meeting, you have to go through, you have to read those user stories one by one. And you have to come up with your high level effort. How much time, how much X days, or how much X hours you would need to complete that particular user story, okay? And during the sprint planning meeting, you can have a discussion with the other team members as well. That, let's say you have this acceptance criteria, one, two, three. You have some acceptance criteria. For example, as you are taking an example of banking, so let's say it's an uh, create account kind of a user story. So create account should be successful. Then you have another acceptance criteria that the existing account, if it is inactive, that can be made as active, right? You can make inactive account, you can convert it to the active as well. Okay. And then you'll say for how many years or for how many months, if there is no transaction done, 
still it remains active, right? So those kind of user story is being created. You have got these acceptance criteria, one, two, three. Okay, now mm -hmm. at the time of planning, you can discuss on all these pointers, discuss on all these acceptance criteria. See, this acceptance criteria is a bit understood, right? Create account should be successful, whether you try with uh, kind of alphanumeric or kind of just alphabetic characters, it should be successful. Inactive to account, active, this particular is also understood. But till what period of time you would like to make it active? So those kind of things you have to discuss in the sprint planning meeting because business analyst would be there, right? So you can have a word on all these points and planning, when you are planning something, and if you see that there is no fun non-functional testing criteria written in the user story, so you can have a word with the business analyst that if you are telling that creation of the account is the user story, in how much time, as soon as you click on create account, the account should be getting created, right? How much time should it take? How much concurrent users you have to support? How much parallel users you have to support? So those kind of things you can discuss during the time of sprint planning. At the time of sprint planning, you can also see if there are three user stories which you have to complete in one sprint. And one sprint is of two weeks, or you can say 15 days. Or two weeks, it is 10 days, right? Because Saturday, Sunday, it's not countable. So two weeks, it is 10 days. So you have three user stories, but you feel this is something that is not doable. So you can discuss with your team that instead of three user stories, can we target two important priority user stories? Because it will not be possible to complete three, right? So those kind of things you have to discuss at the time of planning. Is this clear? Yes. Right? Great, great. Okay, can you explain the defect life cycle? In the defect life cycle, uh, the a tester will raise the defect first, it's open, then it is assigned to the developer, then developer uh, fixed, either fixed the defect or uh, uh, he will uh, put it for a next build if it is not in the priority, then uh, or else it was a duplicate defect or it is a uh, rejected defect that uh, it is not a defect like that. Uh, if it is fixed, then uh, by retesting that uh, the uh, functionality, then we will, if everything is working fine, then we will close the defect. If uh, uh, duplicate, then uh, he will assign. And if deferred, then uh, he will uh, uh, write it for the next build. And uh, it is not a defect, then we will discuss with the product owner and we will uh, make sure that it is not defect. Mm -hmm. So in which cases you have to discuss with the product owner? Uh, first, if the, if the developer is saying that it is not a defect, then mm -hmm. uh, we go through the user stories first. We um, thoroughly go through the functionalities, uh, whether it is a defect or not then it is clear, then we, we will say that it is not a defect, then it is having any con confusion, we go to the product owner to discuss that uh, it is a defect or not a defect. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's say if it is written in the user story and still the developer is not getting convinced, then you have to share the screenshot mm -hmm. or maybe video of the defect yeah. with the acceptance right hand, that this has been done, this has to be done. Still, if they are not getting convinced, you can go to the QA lead or the QA manager first. Still, if the conversation is not being completed, then you can have a word with the project managers or Perfect. you can have those kind of things, right? Have, have initiate those kind of discussions, right? Product yes. manager. Okay, great. Now, uh, how do you start your day? First, uh, first I will check my emails. Mm -hmm emails uh, if the build is deployed or anything is uh, 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 mailed by the developer or lead i will check that then after that uh, uh, i will attend the daily stand up meeting where we will discuss the work done yesterday and what we will do today and what we have to do tomorrow uh, that one discussion uh, then 
uh, if the build is re released then we uh, test the build according to the test cases then mm -hmm. we raise the bug and uh, uh, we will report to the test lead uh, what whatever we are done uh, in the whole day mm -hmm. that one we will do okay is there any time when uh, by the end of the day you did not have anything to report to your test lead yes. have you faced any such instance when you did not have anything to report to your test lead yes so so what was it how, how was it possible when did it happen um yeah when the uh, mm -hmm. build is not uh, build is not, not stable. developed for right yeah. maybe see if the build is not stable so uh, you can tell to your test lead that the build itself was not stable you are not able to test yeah. anything so that's how you can tell or maybe when there is a power cut issue or maybe let's say you uh, are working on some laptop or on machine and that machine itself is not working so what you can do is in these particular situations, you don't have to wait for the end moment for that reporting thing to come, for the reporting time to come, maybe 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. You can tell your leads, you can tell your manager upfront that you are completely blocked and there is an escalation. There is an issue. There's a blocker issue which is blocking you from doing the work. Yes. Right. Great. Now, tell me one thing. Right. What is smoke testing? Smoke testing is uh, uh, is done after uh, after receiving every build. Mm -hmm. It is not in depth uh, testing. Uh, mm -hmm. Only uh, uh, watching what are the modules are developed uh, present. That is smoke testing. That is not in depth. Mm -hmm. so after every build, we will check. Uh, by smoke test. Okay. Fine. So let me share one of the screen. So basically smoke testing is a high level testing that you have to perform and you want to ensure whether the build that you have got is yes. suitable, is eligible for further round of detailed testing or not. Right. So that's how you'll be doing smoke testing. Now this build is build verification test. Yes, build verification. You can tell high level verification, right? Those kind of things. Now this is one of the e-commerce website, okay? And uh, your entire team is doing development testing on this particular website itself. You have to test this particular user story that this phone has been displayed and the price of this phone, warranty criteria, and you have to add it to the cart. So your Testing is limited to this particular area that when you come to this particular page, you have to test the phone details and adding it to the cart. So can you tell me high level test scenarios for this particular user story? Yes, sir. First, uh, we have to test the uh, if the title is visible or not, mm -hmm. image is visible or not, then the uh, flash details button is visible and is active or not mm -hmm. and then uh, the price is visible or not great great and the availability of that product is visible mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. then uh, the details of that product is visible or not then mm -hmm. buy now cart is active or not mm -hmm. uh, and the quantity is also visible or not these all things mm -hmm. we can take care of okay and then, the uh, cards yeah. are also displayed here which uh, whichever the whichever we can use here mm -hmm. okay so these test scenarios that you're telling those are happy path all i would say functional test scenarios right yes. like the verify this particular uh, you are telling price or verify this particular button or options are visible what about negative test scenario? Negative test scenarios means uh, yeah. the price of the uh, price of the item is not visible. 
let's say negative here the... would be one one use case that one one of the test scenario that I'll tell you here is you are verifying the product you are trying to add it to the cart but it is not available in the website or in the uh, I would say the repository itself right it is not available in the stock but you are trying to purchase it then what happens no. negative right we are trying to make that application break you are trying to create a negative scenarios to understand how the system will respond in that situation if the item is not in the storage the not in deposited in the our uh, repository then uh, the message will show that is not in the not available for some time right right that so message should, should be dis appear appear it should be displayed right message should be displayed yeah. because it should not happen that the system throws an exception at that point of time the system yes. should handle these kind of things gracefully yes right okay what else then if a customer uh, adding quantity more than one then is mm -hmm. then it allow to uh, allow to enter that uh, quantity mm -hmm. and if there is a limit uh, to add the quantity then it also shows the message that this much quantity only allow to uh, buy mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Very nice. Yeah. What else? Then uh, the amount is showing is not very after adding the uh, cart. Amount is, can you please come again? Amount is not, should not vary after adding the cart. Amount should not vary. Yeah, yeah. Amount of the okay. uh, item right. is not right right so and earlier it is 4342 once you add it to the card then also it is 4342 but if yeah. you are using some code for example it is told here save five right then the mm -hmm. amount should be updated as per the code which is active yes yeah as displayed here yes mm -hmm. and after clicking buy now it should move to the uh, card page by now it should move to the card page fine fine see after you click on buy now it will be moving to the payments option okay. yeah. mm -hmm. after adding card it should move to the card page yeah so once you click on uh let me see here right so mm -hmm. these are the details basically here and if you click on buy now so currently your buy now is disabled because we haven't logged in to this particular website it's all let yes. me click on this buy now let us see what happens right yeah so this is how it has been displayed are you able to see the pop-up option yes sir. Yeah, the yeah. details of that item so yeah so sorry from my end you are correct it's a cart that has been displayed after this So it will showcase you that there is one item in your cart. One more test scenario that you can discuss, you can tell here is if you have added two items and accordingly the count here should be updated. According to yes. that, the price here should be updated. According to that, the quantity should be getting updated. Right? Yes. And then there are two options. Either you go to that particular cart and you add or remove that products or you go to the payment option. Okay, now I'm telling you one uh, question here. So these scenarios are good, right? And let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. What would be the test scenarios of this particular quantity text box, right? So please mention the test scenarios for a quantity text box in the comment section of the video. Now, uh, Rupa, I need to ask one question to you. Let's say this is your search box, right? This is a search functionality on which you can search the products and accordingly it would be displayed. Let's yes. say on Monday, you started testing of the search functionality. It was working fine. And uh, you had written, let's say 45 test scenarios for the search functionality. Out of 45, you were able to execute 20, right? So 25 were pending. But on Tuesday, when you received the build, 
leave about forget about those 25 scenarios but even the basic scenario related to search functionality was not working on tuesday right so you're getting the question on monday let me tell you here so you are responsible for testing this search functionality okay on monday you tested it uh, and out of 45 scenarios you executed let's say 20 scenarios And on Tuesday, when you received the build, or I would say when you received the release, even the basic feature, this basic functionality was not working at all, right? Now, what would you do in this case? Then hmm. I will find the root cause of that. Uh, uh... Uh, of that, uh, mm -hmm. why it is not working? Mm -hmm. uh, Great. Great. I I have did the API testing also. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. So API. how will you apply API testing here? Here, uh, uh, the method is called get, mm -hmm. where uh, we use the endpoints you as a URL, mm -hmm. and we hit the methods get. And uh, we run the run that API. If the output is not uh, not as expected, then it is uh, it is failed. Okay. So what so, other thing you can do here is you can hit F12 on this same browser. So that approach is fine. You are doing API testing via maybe Postman tool or any other tool. That is fine. And you are hitting the request and you are. But you should have those things handy with you. What should be the request parameters? what yeah. should be the uh, uri that you have to create in that case but what is very important is if if you don't have that postman tool with you then you can click f12 here you can do inspect element and you can yes. see in the api's response only what error you are getting what the what is the status code you are getting are you getting 500 in terms of error yes. are you getting 401 unauthorized those kind of things nice. you are doing, but it's a very good thing that you are telling about API. So yes, you will check, you'll get the root cause analysis, you'll do the root cause analysis, you will try via API testing, that why it's not working, what else you will do? Then then we will go uh, contact, collaborate with the developer. Uh, what is the main uh, uh, issue for that build? Mm -hmm. Then if, uh, they find the main purpose of that build, uh, mm -hmm. issue, then uh, it, they will resolve, uh, resolve and rebuild the rebuild that product. Okay, okay, this is good. Apart from this, what you can do is you have your daily stand-up calls. Okay, you say it at DSS or sync up calls. In that also, you can highlight that. On Monday, it was working fine, but on Tuesday, you got these issues, right? So you can sensitize these particular things during the scrum calls when everyone is there, right? And you can communicate those things to the entire group that it was not working on Tuesday. On Monday, it was working fine. Now on Wednesday, mm -hmm. if again, the stability is there, then mm -hmm. first you will test your these 25 test scenarios, which are totally pending. But then again, you will have to do one round of testing related to these earlier 20 scenarios as well, because you won't get confidence in that. Right? Regression testing. Yes, yes. You'll do you'll do a round of regression testing, you'll do a round of re retesting as well. Right. So this is how you can tell. And you were telling that at the end of the day, you are reporting to your test leads via maybe your updates. So you can write in that that yesterday it was working fine, today it is not working. So there is no stability in the build. And so I'm not confident about this user story at all. I would, maybe you would need some more day to do the testing. Those kind of yes. things you can tell, right? So this is real time scenarios, real time questions that are happening. Okay, one more question. If this is a search functionality and uh, let's say you and I both are working in one team and I have written the test cases for this particular functionality, I am, and, and when this user story is coming for the testing, it is coming for the build, I am not available. 
So what okay. would you do in that case? Uh -huh. Then we fo follow the test cases that mm -hmm. you have written. And uh, I will go through the, first I understand the test cases. Mm -hmm. Then I will go, I'll go through, the, uh, through the functionality and test that according to the test cases. Mm -hmm. So you'll go through the test cases and if there is any updation required or if there is any improvement that needs to be done in the test cases, you would do them and you would get it reviewed by your leads and managers and you will communicate that these are the test cases, updations that I have done. And then you'll start with the story testing. And, and when you will start with the testing, so yes, a good thing that you told is you will understand the functionality as well and you will understand the test cases. But at the same time, try to have more and more test coverage. Let's say maybe I would have written yes. test cases that are covering 60% of the functionality. If you're finding other 20, 30% of test cases which are to be added, you can add them so that the test case coverage increases to 80, 90% sort of. Yes. Right, is this clear? Yes. Okay, okay, great. Okay, what is the difference between load testing and stress testing? Load testing means uh, some quantity of your users uh, mm. we uh, introduce to the application, mm. uh, like thousand, ten thousand like. And mm. stress testing means the application how much it it uh, allows to uh, access that uh, users that is stress testing. Okay, so let's say if there is a requirement that this particular screen or this particular page should be able to allow 1000 users at a time. So in case of load testing, what you'll do is you'll start with 10 users, 20, 50, 100, 200, 300, and you'll increase the load gradually up to 1000 okay. users, right? But in case of stress testing, what you would do, you'll start testing from 1000 month user itself. You'll start the testing beyond the limit. Whereas load testing is testing within the limit, yeah. right? So that is yes. the difference. You have to speak these words in an interview. Load testing, testing the response, the behavior of the application within the limit. And uh, stress testing is yes. testing the response of the application, behavior of the application beyond the limit. That is known yes. as stress testing, right? So these things you have to take care. Okay. Fine. Now, uh, how many types of testing you have performed? I have performed functionality testing, small mm -hmm. testing, sanity, mm -hmm. regression, retesting, uh, UI testing, mm -hmm. database testing, API testing, mm -hmm. and automation testing. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have tested some particular functionality or a feature and you gave the sign off for that particular feature. Okay, now when the client is testing that particular feature or functionality, they are finding defects in the production environment. So what will you do in this scenario? Then uh, I will go through that uh, defect if, mm -hmm. uh, and check whether it is uh, uh, previously present in the build or not mm. yeah or it is uh, produced after the release mm. that build then uh, in the next if that is present if the debug is present then after uh, for the next time the build is uh, ready then we will go for that re regression testing mm. we add that to the regression testing Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. testing that uh, defect. Right, right. What else? Uh, 
then it is add to the automation so that one okay okay so basically what you are doing is you are identifying the issue that has been logged by the customer was it a part of your test case already but it was missed by you and or you'll identify that scenario itself was not covered in your test cases right or that scenario itself was missing then you will add that particular scenario in the regression so that in the future it can be taken care and at the first point you have to be very sure that the fix is being made by the development team and you are testing that fix thoroughly and you are aware about the impacted areas about the fix once you are sure sure that that particular fix is done you'll test it multiple times once you are confident then and then only you'll sign off because once they have found the defect if second time they'll find the same discrepancy or some issue then definitely uh, it will not be sounding good their confidence will be broken right it becomes very important that the second time it should not fail right okay uh, rupa i am done with the interview do you have any questions for me yes uh, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, how, my, how how i will improve myself yeah. right right so uh, see the very first thing is you were able to answer i would say 70% to 80% of the questions today so let's start with the first question about uh, uh sprint planning related questions then uh, that search functionality related question uh, then what is smoke testing what are the different activities that you do so those things were clear you were able to answer just one or two thing i think uh, related to sprint planning what discussion do you do during the sprint planning that one or two questions related to agile you have to focus rest all looks good you have to improve on the um Kind of presentation skills so when you are speaking the answer it should be structured you start with one of the point and then you come up with the second point third point fourth point like that so if you will speak the answers in a structured format in a structured manner then the interview would be happy to listen to you right because that that is something the presentation skills communication wise is fine you have to improve maybe the words over there and the knowledge wise is also good manual testing related questions today we covered so the questions that i was asking were from some of the company based questions that have been asked to the people who had two plus years of experience or two years of experience your experience level is one year nine months so that is also equivalent to two years right so those questions would be asked to you right so it was overall it was good and you have to improve on these kind of scenario based things Right. So once you are prepared, then we can connect again for that as well. Right. Anything else you would like to ask? Yes, sir. Uh, how to manage the time? I have to ask about. Uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, spending.